on board your board. Let's get this over with. <laughs> well, look who's here. New recruits. Well, <laughs> let's fuck some shit up. <sighs> Miss Midoriya, this is the fifth time this week your son has assaulted a student and teacher for what he said was they were staring at him for too long and they attacked him. Now, the young boy in question, Kaski Bakugo, I, I can see with the teacher, that's a little bit harder to believe. As, yeah, they looking at Izuku, he, he's taller than uh, your average six-year-old. <laughs> so, I didn't mean to. I can't, I can't help it. Would you mind if m me and uh, young Izuku can, you know, talk in private? Uh, um, sure. As, yeah, Izuku, he's trying to avoid all eye contact. The woman, the principal, I say, her pretty much is like, is there something wrong with home? You can tell me if there's there is. Zuku's no, there's, there's nothing. I promise. She's very nice to me, and I don't know why I lash out like this. It's been so long since I've been home. Home. Interesting. Would you care to explain? As yes, Izuku, he explains this large facility in which there are different sections. One with creepers, pigmen, skeletons, and the one he goes into further depth, Endermen. This actually confuses the principals. Like, well, what do you mean, Endermen? Um, that's what they called us us so what do you remember last about your parents we were we were running and come on I was in my mom's arms and my dad was fighting I, I don't know who but if anything when he caught us, he was missing an arm. Oh. Please, carry on. Uh, they said that uh, I had to leave. And they'll be gone for a little while. And they promised they, that I, they'd come back to get me. Or we'd stay wherever they left me. I... At least that's why they told me last. And that's when my dad touched me and I teleported here. Hmm. Miss Inko has told us that that's what you said to her when you first arrived. But what do you mean by teleport? Is that your quirk? Um, I, I guess, I mean, we all can do it, Endermen, what about Creepers, do you know m much about them? Y yeah, uh, they, they're very anxious and scared, but for some reason they get closer to you, despite this. Then they start hissing, and it sounds like or like a fuse. What do you mean? Her playing a clip of a fuse being lit and starting to sizzle. I was like, yeah, exactly. 
Hmm. Please carry on. Keep telling me more of this. Well, all I know is they don't smile as soon as they see someone. Unless it's another creeper. Why is that? Because once they get close enough to you, they'll blow up. And th uh, there's a lot of cleaning up afterwards, I was told. Why did you uh, leave this facility? Would you mind asking? Uh, asking who? Miss Midoriya, because it seems like she might have had some uh, sway over what you remember. Oh no, Th in fact, my dad gave me this. And what's that? I don't know. All I remember is that it's been blinking ever since I arrived and he gave it, it to me. So I think I could find them or they can find me. I believe that's what they would call a beacon, but... Hmm. Strange. Very strange. As yeah, Izuku, he gives her the best explanation. He doesn't really know why he's like this. But then he remembers something. When he went to the physician, at least doctor of that place. Sorry. Uh, okay, what do you remember? Uh, he put me to sleep and... Then, for some reason, whenever someone who wasn't one of us or anything was looking at us, we we started getting more hostile. At least I did. Really? And you started lashing out right then and there? Yes. Don't you see the correlation? Seems like whatever that doctor did to you could be the cause of your violent outbursts. You really think? Seems like the most likely solution. We might need to get you to another doctor. Hmm. Oh well, at very least, I believe I have enough to really go on. As, yeah, it goes, welcome back into the office and, alright, Izuku seems to know more about his past and even gave us some good insight and it seems as though... Yes, yeah, something's been done to him to a point where he can't help but feel agitated when certain things look at him. Huh, but it makes no sense. There is a boy that hasn't been assaulted by Izuku. But he's just a very strange person who likes to wear a pumpkin as a mask. I don't understand that. So, what do you think I should do? Get him to a doctor and see... Hmm, see if you can, he can uh, fix what that other physician has messed up. Or implanted in the poor boy, changed. From what I can tell, people have said there was a scar along his back. What? 
Yes. A scar. How have you not noticed? Well, his skin is very, is almost pitch black and I can't really notice any sutures. Or... Hmm. Very well. As Inko gets the name of a very well-known doctor and they go home. Via Izuku pretty much teleporting them. And though, yes, the doctor looks, they do an x-ray and everything, but as soon as he actually does see anything, it's almost like it's welded into Izuku's skeleton. At least, his spine. Which means removing it, it'll be very much more problematic than if we... Just uh, leave it alone. What's worse is that the fact that it's still active, but it has this transmitter that seems to be malfunctioning. So, whoever put that thing and built it to the spine also wanted to make sure it could keep track of him. Which just bows the question who did this? And what the hell? Anywho, this is when pretty much Izuku is trying to go, do some therapy, trying to find out. I was like, okay, so how I curb my violent tendencies? And which, huh, who, who else is known for dealing with someone with, who has anger issues? Nisuke Bakugo! Oh, yeah, she has actually an interesting method in parenting, or at least discipline. She tells he's going to sit in a chair. He does. She says face to face with him and starts staring. Again, he's starting to feel anxious, irritated, and he lunges at Miski, which she pips at his ass just for him to turn around and go for another punch, but she uppercuts him pretty much having him constantly be on the offensive and defensive he's attacking he's trying to defend but Miski in dealing with Bakugo's rash behavior she's prepared for it and this goes on up until he's 10 years old in which he can at least have people stare at him without any trouble for at least 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes. That's a, that's just the most he, they can do. Because as far as getting that thing detached from the spine, is, it would be completely life-threatening, and it's just something that you should never have done to a child. So, 10 years old, this is about the time of the All Might vs. All for one fight. As soon as it occurs, Izuku, Miski, Inko, and Kaski, yeah, they're all walking together when it happens. And start uh, ducking high for cover as soon as it begins. Only thing is, Bakugo and Izuku know All Might. They love All Might. They're fanboys, just not to the extent of Ken and Izuku. So as soon as Bakugo is like, oh, it's All Might fight. Don't, no one needs to worry about it. Him going outside of the shelter and yeah going to see the fight face to face Miski is thinking I am going to kill that brat Izuku and Ingo mostly worried though Izuku does have the utmost faith in All Might ugh, it's hard to fight when you have to protect someone from falling rubble, damaged buildings, glass and whatnot. not to mention stray shots if it is a projectile based quirk. So he actually offers to go get Bakugo. This is easier said than done because Bakugo does not want to miss this fight. Much to the point where Izuku, instead of just 
pulling him or dragging him. He has no choice but to teleport him back to Mizuki and Inko. But by this time, All Might, he is down. He has not been stabbed and lost his, his glory system yet. But it's to the point where he's going to need a minute to get back up. All for one, having a pretty good healing quirk by this time, he goes straight to Izuku just to pretty much break All Might's spirit. But not before, he just picks him up by his neck and punch him straight in the back. Izuku feels this. He feels something crack. Almost splitting with that punch. Go. All I think he can really do is just scream and yell as All Might is struggling to get up. On for one, pretty much looking. Eh. Huh. What are you? Him just tossing Izuku aside. All Might, thinking Izuku's dead, is now in rage mode. If you thought his complete and utter nonsensical bullshitteriness was crazy before, yeah, killing a kid in front of him is not the brightest decision. As he is still at 100%, he can still go beyond plus ultra. And, yeah, no time limit, no problem. That, it makes it look like that normal fight, but worse, considering he is fueled by complete and utter, what the fuck, rage. Think of the quiet kid that you didn't know could kick your ass. And then you see someone who's bullying him finally break the seal. Yeah, that's pretty much what this fight is. Because all might feel like he's failed and that rage is blinding him. To the point where... All for one is lucky he just lost his face. It's only till the fight's over that all for one is... <laughs> clinging to life at best that he just walks over to Izuku and picks him up but this is where something weird happens Izuku just <clears throat> what <sighs> All Might? Uh, you're alive? It, yeah, I'm very resilient. Oh, thank God. Him inadvertently hugging Izuku saying, Oh, thank God you're alive. I was so worried. Izuku nobly blushing. It's because it's this is not just embarrassing. He's also trying not to fanboy out. Since it's literally All Might himself doing this. When, yeah, Inko, Miski, and Kaski show up to the fight, they see this is like. Okay, what did we miss? Bakugo being kind of jealous, but it's like, okay, this is. Uh, this probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for me. <laughs> As then the police show up. Other heroes finally get there. Seeing All Might just pretty much being so happy that his kid's alive. They see the state all for one's in. They have to check his pulse just to make sure that he's still breathing before they arrest him. They still have to take him to the hospital. It's just... Uh, there's... That face is ruined. Worse than in canon. So, that's pretty much how that goes. All Might gets to keep his buff form and whatnot. He doesn't have to worry about going to the hospital for serious injuries, though he does go just to make sure everything is all hunky dory. And when it comes to Izuku, he has an autograph 
for an All Might as this Bakugo. And, yeah. But, what really surprises him is when All Might comes to his door and offers to train him to be a hero. Isigu, in the spur of the moment, he just fanboys out to the complete nonsensical degree. Oh my god, like, okay, yeah, he's a, he, so, yeah, he's a fan of mine, okay. But then he's like, wait, can one of my friends join us too? Um, sure. Him telling Kosky and Wow, this, he's not as much of a fanboy as Izuku, but yeah, he's like, this is the best thing ever. So, yeah, they're training. And since they're under supervision from the Noble War Hero, no less, not only do they get to use their quirks in this, into the fullest, uh, yeah, people start talking and thinking like, okay, so these is the psychics or are they trained with no more hero to become heroes themselves? Is he going or are they gonna join his agency or whatnot? You know. Hmm, huh, why not? So yeah, you can just imagine his whole demeanor. He's grateful to Izuku because that gave him one hell of a second win. And for what comes to Kosky, yeah, thanks to Izuku actually beating the shit out of him. <laughs> he, his attitude is a lot different. Very, very different compared to how it would be in canon. And they still end up being friends because of this. Even closer when they're training with All Might. Each of them trying to warm up each other. Izuku, he tries to increase the range of how far he can teleport, as well as how much he can teleport. And luckily, Degaba Beach it does get a little dirty every now and again, but Izuku, he starts to be able to differentiate how where this goes. He can just teleport it there. He can send it to recycling, the dump. Junkyard. That's pretty much his training. When it comes to Bakugo explosions, yes, he's learned how to fly. The only thing is, he's he really wants to get back at Izuku. I'm sorry, he's a little petty. You would be too. So you can just imagine. Every time they do have a a fight. Izuku just teleports him out of the way. But he's. <laughs> Bago is giving a temper. But just then, this is when Izuku re finally realizes as their fight carries on, Bago has been staring at him for more than 30 minutes. And he's fine. So, as soon as he wins the fight, of course he wins. He pretty much just launches Bago so far out into the ocean that he, using his quirk to fly back is pretty much useless unless he concedes defeat. They go straight to the hospital to really take a look at that spine again. In which... The device is actually cracked or damaged. It's welded to his spine to a point where if they tried to actually uh, remove it, they would have to remove that piece as well. But thanks to all for one actually cracking it, at least punching him in the back like he did. It, it has enough slack to the point where they can possibly pry the device off. Good news? 
it it uh, does come out. Worrisome news. Who put it there? Izuku has no idea. He doesn't know where it came from. He doesn't know who that doctor was. Yeah, he ain't had no references or anything. Like no, like no. Here's my card and whatnot. So yeah, this is a honest to god problem here. They don't know who did it, but they are on the lookout for anyone doing any sort of wrongdoing and experiments. If they hear anything from the other ground, chances are they're going to pounce on it and find out what are they doing. So the whole doctor who in the canon who said he was quirkless, yeah, he, he was already on that list. With all for one gone, he pretty much had no one to really say no to him. He has like, no, let's go uh, grave robbing. Let's, uh, let's find some more hosts for this and that. So they found the Nomu factory. They arrested him. They killed off all the Nomus. Aizawa and President Mike seen the body of their dead friend. They were going to murder this doctor. And at the end of it, as soon as it became clear what he was doing, all my just like, thanks to this boy, we have uncovered a disturbing trade. That was being performed on corpses as well as living subjects. Oh yeah, Izuku changing some things. Damn it! The only thing is, I still haven't found Izuku's doctor. So if anything, Izuku does tell them about this beacon he has. All my feeling like. Okay. Interesting. Him taking it. But as soon as he actually does... Hmm. So your dad gave you this. Mm-hmm. Just so they could find you. Your parents. Right. Do you think they're still back at your home? I think so. Okay. I'll have a friend of mine uh, look into it. And, uh, he says he hears nothing. No nothing at all. So, I'm sorry, getting Midoriya. I. I don't know what to tell you. The beacon was not traceable, and chances are it wasn't a beacon. It was just a toy and whatnot. Izuku is heartbroken, because this means that his parents weren't planning on going with him. His parents weren't planning on following him. They weren't gonna see him again. They weren't gonna try. But then, Izuku's, you know what? That's okay. I'm sure they had their reasons. And. <sighs> Thank you for telling me. And this is about time where it's the end of middle school. Izuku and Bako have been training with All Might for years. And yeah, everyone in their school knows that they're going to UA. They know that, heck, if anyone's going to be the number one heroes, it's one of them two. But. Izuku still wishes he could see his parents again, especially his mom. 
but having Inko there be so supportive, such a sweet woman and whatnot, she's, yeah, he's not lonely, definitely not, since that thing being busted and removed, yeah, he doesn't get into any more fights at school. So, I'm going to say this is a win. Because the whole interest is that Izuku just teleports each and every one of the robots so high up. Oraka's in there like, what the hell? Who's copying me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like that. Izuku, he's just... Like, ooh, you go into the sky, you go to the sky, everyone goes into the sky. Like, Oprah and this bitch. So, yeah, first place is easy for him. So, especially since he can teleport himself to other robots. He helps people get some of them good hero points. First place is easy for him. Now, when it comes to the whole uh, first day... Ia does argue with Bakugo, considering uh, you can say Bakugo is feeling himself a little bit. He's he's all calmer than he should be compared to Cannon, and he's fine. Uh, I put my feet down from the desk, being all sorts of respectful. Just please don't yell at me again. That gets on my nerves. Very well. I understand. So, you can just imagine. Izuku saying hi to Bongo, him saying hi back, it's all good. Comes to the quirk apprehension test. Izuku does, does have uh, speed and when it comes to other things down. Strength isn't his strongest uh, ability, but... Really, he can send you through a wall, need be. <sighs> when it comes to the heroes versus villains, <laughs> it's not even fair. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this is going to be easy. Raga, tell me uh, on the com wherever uh, the bomb is and I'll teleport there. I'll deal with Kotsky. Are you sure? Oh, trust me, I've followed him for years. I trained with him. I know his tactics and all of that. In which, yes. Though Bakugo has gotten a lot stronger, he even has his AP shot. Izuku being able to teleport things to a greater extent, even make somewhat of a portal now. Because he actually learned something about that purple energy he emits. Not only that, he can use it in a variety of ways. But, hmm. I wonder. Him actually noticing if he puts a certain amount of portals in a certain amount of places and it disappear. You can still go back to those exact same places. Like say if you went to Australia, one of the most dangerous places to, to be at at night. If you don't believe me, change my mind and look up some of the damn animals that belong there. Didn't they lose a war to a big ass bird? <clears throat> so yeah, where he teleports... Bob goes to is the men's locker room. So, Bob goes pissed. <laughs> you can't believe he's gonna pull that slick shit. As soon as the Rocco is uh, done laughing at Ida, Izuku teleports straight towards her after getting the coordinates. And then teleports them both to <laughs> the bomb. They win. Uh, 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 hero team wins? But. The heroes versus villains is where things really change. Because this is when Izuku learns 
a darker aspect of his quirk. See, when he sees Kurigiri, he's different. At first, when Aizawa sees him, he's like, wait, no, we, we buried you again. How are you? Then Izuku gets a better look. No. No, that's not right. As he sees, instead of the canon yellow eyes, golden, somewhat golden yellow eyes, he sees purple. And he sees stitches all throughout the body. Him looking deeper and seeing. Dad, that's you. Everyone looking back, they say, What? Because of Shigaraki, he's. Wait, what does he mean, my dad? You could just teleport to Dakota Giri. Dakota Giri is just standing there. I'm sorry, but I do not have any offspring. Come on, Dad, don't you recognize me? It's, it's me! I don't right um you Isuk no as yes Cody Gary starts spazzing out you could say but this when she right you think she's a sound like no kill this kid he's messing with our ride and seeing this the smoke clears from Kyoriki's face after Nomu's punch. Izuku being able to dodge it since hell he's trained with all my e-spar with him too. He knows how brawlers can somewhat move around. All he sees are the scratches, the cuts, the stitches. Looking like his dad has been stitched back together after being ripped apart. And Zuku's expression of this is nothing short of horror mixed in with sadness and anger. Which when the Nobu punches him again, he summons a portal and strikes right in Shigaraki's face. Only for him to summon another one right under the Nobu, cuts off his legs and its arm, and walks up to Shigaraki. What did you do? <laughs> Wait, what? What did you do, my dad? Me? No. I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. This is when Izuku starts getting malicious. He starts demanding answers. I saw what you did to Aizawa Sensei. What? Your quirk revolves around those hands of yours. Uh, wait, what are you? As a tiny portal just appears and cuts off one of Shigaraki's fingers. Him screaming as then Izuku is demanding, What did you do to my dad? As he starts cutting off more fingers, Shigaraki screaming, yelling, I don't know what you're talking about. I was given this thing as Izuku is not having any of it. But then he starts getting more personal, like, where's my mom? What have you done to my parents? Tell me now or else there won't be anything left of you. Shigaraki's looking at this dead-eyed expression as Kurigiri is still spazzing out. But upon hearing the screams of Shigaraki, he snaps out of it and goes in to protect him. Izuku almost ripping out Kurigiri's heart, but hesitates once he sees his dad's face again. 
him getting bit slapped by a Nomu, who's regenerated and crashing into a wall. As this time is Shigaraki bleeding out slowly, so he has to get to a doctor quick. And Kodagiri looking back at Izuku. Who are you? Being his last thought before they leave. 